Hi fellow artists, my name is Lauren, I am the artist behind Potato Art Studios, and in today's video I'll be demonstrating how I drew and colored this toucan with pastel pencils and soft pastels. So if you're interested in seeing how I drew this bird, just keep on watching. So during this video, if you find any of it useful, please give it a thumbs up and that will help YouTube recommend this video to other viewers. I have a list of all of the materials that I used in this drawing down in the description box below. So if you're interested in seeing what I use, I'll have uh, product links for you to check out. Get started on my sketch. I always start off with a one inch grid and I have the same grid drawn over my reference picture in my photo editing program. If you'd like to see an in-depth tutorial on how I set everything up, I'll have it linked up in the upper right hand corner in the cards and also down below in the description box. But I always like to have my drawn out with my Prismacolor Coal Erase Pencil in white and that is the pencil you see me using here. And I like to just roughly sketch out the bird and when I want to refine my sketch further, I'm going to make these half inch marks on my grid with a contrasting color and that's the green pastel pencil you saw a few seconds ago. And then I'm going to go over the same sketch again but make small changes as I'm checking my drawing to now the half inch grid that I have. So you'll see that I'm using a kneaded eraser to remove that pencil if it was not in the right spot and then I'll redraw over where I feel like I need to make adjustments. And we're just going around the entire bird. Once we have that down, I'm going to jump straight into doing the background of the drawing. So to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to just remove a bit of the grid with the kneaded eraser. And for the background, I'm going to just scribble. <laughs> There's no fancy way to say what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to get color onto the paper and I know I in my head that I kind of wanted a green, blue, gray background, but I just wanted to see how much I could get away with. So I basically went to town and just made a bunch of scribble marks. And I used the soft blending tools to blend out the background. And I believe I'm using the number three knife and also the number one knife. And I'll have those linked down below as well. But my background, I typically don't finalize it straight away. It's kind of an ongoing thing where I'll make changes later on if I feel like the background doesn't quite match the subject. And so now we're going to get into coloring the toucan. And for the large areas, I can still use my soft pastels because I don't need to be very accurate. But as we get into the finer details, like on the head and the face of the toucan, I'm actually going to switch it up and turn to just using the pastel pencils because it I need to be a little bit more precise. If you've seen um, some of my past tutorials where I've used uh, yellow extensively, you'll know that yellow is not a very strong color on its own. And the same thing applies to orange. They tend to be a little bit weaker on the pigment side. So I'd like to have a base of a light white color first and that allows the yellow to stand out. Um, more easily. And when we're blending small areas, I like to use a small eyeshadow applicator to actually blend the pastels. So not anything fancy, just your regular eyeshadow applicator you usually find in packs at your um, dr local drugstore. That's basically what I use to blend it out and it works pretty well. And I think I realized at this point that my background was a little bit dark. So in, 
It looked a little bit gloomy, for, so the toucan looked like he was in a over, very overcast rainforest. So I decided to brighten up the whole background up by overlaying some bright blue. And you can see how quickly it is to blend out that background, even though I was really sloppy with applying the color. And now that I feel like it, the background matches better with the toucan, I can go back and start adding more color and building up the values on the toucan's body. So on the toucan, I was kind of experimenting with different things. I thought it'd be fun to introduce some purples to it, also some greens. And so just kind of playing around with color and seeing if I like the results. And I did end up really liking that light blue lavender color. So we're moving on to refining some details on the toucan's face. And you'll see that I'm just working with the pastel pencils on this, on his eye. And it's because I have the colors blocked in already, it's just a matter of just fine tuning slowly the colors so it gives the impression that the toucan's eye is a little bit receded and also that the top of his head caught the light a little bit more. And I think the trickiest part of the toucan was actually the bill or his beak, mainly because the reference picture, there were, it was like there are lots of small gradients on the toucan's beak. So the colors blended very seamlessly um, but in very small areas. So I had to figure out how I was going to layer the colors up and blend them without the colors getting too muddy. Um, I found that my eyeshadow applicator was actually a little bit too big, so I'm still looking for a blending tool that's even smaller than the eyeshadow applicator um, for future projects. Okay, and then I decided to add more white to the background. And I think it's important to take a note that I, when I blended the background, um, you saw that I actually overlapped the background onto the beak of the bird. And that's because it's really hard to color match the background at a future time if I found out that I was missing a spot um, because the background is made out of at least five or six colors. It's actually easier for me to have the background overlap on the bird and then redo parts of the beak that were covered by the background color. I noticed that in my earlier drawings and also with a lot of other pastel drawings that if you're not careful about the background color, you actually end up with kind of an halo effect around your subject because I felt that when I was first drawing backgrounds, I didn't want the background and the subject to touch because you don't want to, you know, mess up the colors. But when you're working with pastels, one of them has to give, if that makes sense. If you are so afraid to make the colors touch each other or go near each other, you end up with this strange gap between their background and your subject where the paper color is showing through. So you have to choose which one you want to overtake the other. So in most cases, I have the background overlap the subject and then I just redraw the areas that were slightly overlapped. And it's like taking three steps forward and one step back, but I felt that that's pretty much the only way I figured out so far how to work without that strange halo of missing color around my subject. And I went off a little bit of a tangent there, but going back to talking about the bird, you can see that I'm kind of making the branch that he's sitting on actually a kind of more loose and more painterly. and. I kind of like that effect. It might be something I try in future projects because 
if you think about how a camera focuses and even how your eye focuses on something, since the branch is actually further forward than the toucan's head, the, the branch is actually a little bit blurry as well. So that kind of plays in my favor where I don't need to spend as much time on the f very foreground subject of the branch, but it still makes logical sense when you look at it that your background is very blurry, your the subject that's in focus, which is the plane of the toucan's head, is the most detailed, and then at the very foreground where the tree branch is, um, that also becomes blurry. I like to rotate my picture when I'm trying to work at certain angles so that I my wrist isn't strained because it's important to not overuse your your small muscles in your wrist and your arm. I actually was dealing with a lot of elbow pain over the past two weeks um, so making sure that I try to do whatever I can to ease the strain on myself is was really important so whenever I needed to rotate the picture I always rotated it it takes you know 30 seconds to do it but it definitely saved my arm from getting worse and so I'm making adjustments to the body that are a little bit different from the picture if you'll notice I on the feathers, I actually used some of the color from the background that was still deposited on my blending soft tool and I deposited that color onto the feathers and I think that kind of helped unify the bird with the background. And now I'm trying to work on that tree a little bit and I'm trying to keep it intentionally painterly looking and really trying to get that yellow on the beak to pop so where I think I need to add more white I'm going to add white and then go over those areas with yellow so the yellow can really shine and so it's a lot of stepping back and fine-tuning your colors um, when you're sitting up so close and working within a foot away from your drawing, you can kind of get l a little lost because you only see a couple square inches that you're focused on. But it's always important to stand at least 6 or 10 feet away and reevaluate if your um, values are correct and if, you're, if there are any other um, corrections you can make to improve your drawing. And so I think I'm just putting, a, deepening the values on the body. Just, instead of using just black, I'm trying to implement some dark purples and dark blues so it makes the colors look a little bit richer. And I think we're done. So this is the finished toucan. Um, if you have any questions about my video, please ask down below and I will do my best to answer them. Again, all of the materials will be also listed down below in the description box. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and that will tell YouTube to recommend this video to other artists. Um, if you're not following me on Instagram, I'll leave my Instagram handle on the screen and also down below. I drew this toucan because it was the winner of a poll in my Instagram stories last week. And so my Instagram followers have a direct say in what I draw and what my next YouTube video is. So if you'd like to participate, please check out my Instagram. I do update every weekday and I also post progress pictures, and short video clips throughout the week. If you like this video, I also have a whole playlist down below. If you'd like to see more content, you can always subscribe and turn on your notifications so you'll be notified the next time I post a video. I have a time-lapse Tuesday up every Tuesday. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.